Hi, my name is Philip Beither. I'm the curator for performing arts here at the Walker Arts Center. And with me is our most recently commissioned artist, choreographer Chris Schlichting, who just premiered a couple of weeks ago his newest work, Stripe Tease, a kind of monumental interdisciplinary performance creation um, that will go on and tour to different parts of the country. And I will start, Chris, with just asking, um, Two weeks later, any feelings, observations, sense about the work now looking back that you accomplished here at the Walker with us? I, f I felt good about the, the work the way it happened. I have a, you know, a long history with the Walker and I've lived a lot of hours in that space you know, with other artists too. And it's just continuing to re reveal new information about, um, about space, about performance and that it continues to surprise and yeah um, one of the things I, th I thought um, y about your work in recent years is this really exquisite sense and surprising and um, exciting use of space that you have you seem to have an innate ability to create almost site specific feeling works within what sometimes are normal theatrical um, spaces how do you, when you're asked to create a new work in a space, how do you first go about it? What do you look for? How do you, how do you investigate space f for a dance, a dance performance work that you're making? Yeah, I, well, y you know, it's a luxury to know when you, you, to have that awareness of what space you will be working in. Right. And so I think as soon as th as that awareness hits is when I think a lot of contemplation happens mm -hmm. about the relationship between uh, the piece and its relationship to the space, to the architecture. Um, this work, you started with uh, a, s a smaller commission in our sculpture garden, mm -hmm. a vastly different kind of space. You had to uh, com really rethink the work uh, for the McGuire Theater, but like you said, you've seen a lot of shows in there. You've performed on that stage a number of times. What did you find um, did you know when you, when we asked you to make a new work for the McGuire, exactly what kinds of crevices and cr cracks and you know elements within the space that you wanted to mine for your work? No, I yeah. didn't. No, it was it was a process. Of, it was a dialogue of right. really really considering how the space, how the, the theatrical space would shape or how the, the, the piece could coexist with the space. Right. The piece in the sculpture garden also was about, um, it also, it existed in a really different landscape, right? It was right. In, in the outdoors, right. and so it was. Um, which which you cha are challenged by the expanse of nature, sky, um, how to stay, keep, keep an audience focused in some ways. Yeah. I, I think one of the considerations was connecting the history of the piece, right? Thinking right. about sort of the, um, the the different lives of the piece, how it existed within the garden, how there was uh, uh, there were pathways that were carved within the garden. Right. We, so we wanted some of that to live to with, live when you moved it into the theater, into the yeah. theater too. Right. right. Um, acknowledging, yeah, traversing different spaces and, and, and uh, sort of, yeah. Are you are you already uh, in advance looking at images or flying to cities where the work will go to get your head around these? vastly different kinds of spaces you'll take it into? Yeah, a number of the spaces that it will be traveling to, I've researched or, or spent time in the right. space. A couple yeah. of them I haven't, but yeah. intend to have some site visits to yeah. um, do some experimenting and sort of uh, taking, taking those in. Having seen so many shows, you're, um, you come to many of our performances, which is always wonderful to see you in the house. Did you find, thinking back, say since the theater opened nearly 10 years ago, key moments or experiences that you thought, I really like the way that person did something or uh, this didn't really work well in this theater or you know, ways that you thought, oh, you know, gave you a whole decade of education about that theater in particular. Let's um, start with the ones that really didn't work, Philip. <laughs> uh, um, no. I'm we both can compare, <laughs> put our list together. But, uh, um, yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, yeah. certainly. I think there. I mean, there are so many artists that um, have uh, that come to mind. So many memories of. Um, I mean, I think of uh, Judson Dance Theater work that right. um, lived in the space and how they used objects, how they used different ways of thinking about the space. I mean, um, even recently, like with the Steve Paxton Festival, absolutely. Like that, Trisha Ray, Brown, Trisha, and, yeah. and uh, I think about. 
uh, I mean, Anna Teresa de Kiersmacher, I right. think about a lot of, um, yeah, their use of, of the architecture and then and thinking about space. Yeah. Um, Sarah Mitchelson's work, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of local artists, too. Right. I mean, Morgan sure. Thorson's use of space with also. With Heaven and with other past works. Yeah. 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 And, and Hijack. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I think I always feel in dialogue with a lot of, a lot of different work, but right. um, it's, you know, I see, yeah. It, well, one I, of the pleasures for me, having, be feeling so close to the space and being involved in its planning and um, uh, a little bit in the design, was how you really utilized all these aspects. The fly, the fly loft, which was something that a lot of theaters these days don't have. The boxes, the um, placing performance in a way um, that really brought it off the stage as well. Was, was your interest from the start with this work um, to make it more immersive, to make the audience feel that performance and sound and design was surrounding them? I, I wanted to be careful about how immersive or uh -huh. uh, right uh, uh, yeah I, I didn't want it to feel I, I struggle with the sort of an audience participation right. or involvement and yes. so um, but I, I did want to pay homage to the different spaces to the the formal framing devices and looking at the the mechanics behind right. the theater and yeah. then also um, but yeah, and then also, yeah, the spa the performative spaces, really. Right. Um, and then interest in, in sort of the formal, asp formal and vernacular elements that exist and, uh, and wanting to have some conversation about that right. and exposure of those elements. Does your, does your work at, I know you work at the, at the School of Architecture at the U, and you, um, does that inform your sense of uh, use of space and how you think about bodies in space sort of things. certainly yeah. yeah so I work in the College of Design and I work with landscape design planning students and architecture majors and yeah. I collaborate really closely with a faculty in the different departments too right and uh, yeah there there's just a constant uh, dialogue and just uh, a lot of conversations about space there's a lot right. of uh, a lot of work that's that's up that certainly is um, part of the conversation right do you, do you find um, there was uh, there was something um, really spectacular in, uh, about the work and the notions at one era in American contemporary dance history, spectacle was often um, thought of in a pejorative way um, uh, or as counter to seriousness and rigor. Mm -hmm. um, you've been able to sort of, and a handful of other artists, to both embrace spectacle and rigor. Do you find that there's a tension there at times? I definitely think there's a tension. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in that dichotomy, in that right. sort of uh, intimacy versus this sort of um, sort of uh, cold quality with the spectacle. I'm interested right. in um, that juxtaposition and sort of a personal private experience and something that's massive and right. Um, yeah, and vacant potentially, you uh -huh, know. Sure. So right. I think, but I, I think I wrestle with those experiences, you know, of sort of yearning and craving something, a right. collective big experience, yeah. and then. And, and um, how would you put entertainment, the notion of entertainment, into that mix as well? I, I put it in, yeah, within the equation. Right. I mean, I think it's, I think it's, I, th I think it's, it's a yearning, a, a simultaneous yearning, and then also a, a questioning of, of right. sort of evaluating and looking at it. Yeah. at uh, where I'm at, what that experience is like as a viewer or right. performer. Yeah. Um, you used the word intimate when you talked about the experience uh, at, in part that you tried to create through the, through the, the creation of the work. Could you, could you t what do you mean by intimate? I mean, what, what, what is that in a, in a 385 seat theatrical space? Uh, sure. I mean, I think uh, part of it is scale. It's uh, it's the human experience. It's uh, yeah. how that's being communicated. You know, the movement is really beginning from a single body, right? right it's starting right. Yeah. from uh, a movement impulse. Right. And so, a lot of those movement impulses, I think, begin in a private space, a quiet space. Uh -huh. 
Um, and so I think it's, it's also a, a process of reflecting back what's seen in that process uh -huh. and how that, how that reads. Right. Um, right. So I think a lot of those experiences, or what speaks to me oftentimes, are those experiences that feel vulnerable, that right. feel like something that's maybe a little scary to share, but uh -huh. feel like uh -huh. um, somehow compelling images that I come back right. to. And, that, and the body relationship around that vulnerability. I mean, we obviously all have bodies and we watch bodies and feel a certain kind of kinesthetic empathy to the bodies we're watching on stage. Is that part of the scariness that, or the, the vulnerability that you, f you, that an audience innately will feel if the movement is shaped in a certain kind of way? Say, say that again. Well, is it, is it, um, is it unique? Is that, is there something unique about being a choreographer and working with bodies in a non-literal, in a, in a non-textual way, without words, without necessarily narrative, that can be particularly powerful in evoking that sense of human vulnerability and empathy and things. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think it. I think those moments they do reveal, um, yeah, vulnerable parts of ourselves that f elements yeah. that feel exposed. That that. Um, I guess, yeah, hint at our experience in ways where we where we feel at risk for being judged or right, um, yeah, yeah. And I think so, yeah. I think that yeah. that. I mean, I'm interested in the ex those experiences within the body of um, where those judgments exist, but where yeah. we can where we have an empathy for someone having an experience. Or, right. Um, and then I think that to, there are just ex there are impulses, there are physical impulses that occur. Yeah. in ways that um, th are hard to sort of qualify or describe, but just right. exist in this sort of, um, I don't know, challenging way, or they, they feel gross, or they feel right. um, exciting in some way. Yeah, or, titillating um, or, yeah. or whatever else. I mean, that that's gets to the, also the, sometimes the interesting um, question around almost a certain kind of erotic or sensual sensibility to mm -hmm. your work balanced by a kind of formal, you know, almost uh, a, a precise arithmetic tick quality to, mm -hmm. you know, your construction of movement. Um, do, you, do you play on that balance often? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm excited by those, right. those events when they happen, and I think those are, those are all um, considerations within the, the composition, within right. yeah. um, organizing a tension that feels engaging to to be involved with, yeah. and then I think also in, in a way of sort of valuing and um, or measuring out different balance uh, right. in yeah. terms of the experience yeah. too. Yeah. Huh. What do you hope an audience will walk away, especially one say new to your work or possibly even new to dance, will walk away from your work with? I try not to. I try not to speculate too yes, much on right. what their intentions are, but. I guess it goes back to the conversations that I feel like I have with work and yeah. um, negotiating my own interests and values. And right. so I hope that others are, are wrestling with or negotiating those same questions or yeah. issues in a way that I hope is exciting and engaging. Yeah. Do you f are you surprised when you he get feedback from people about what uh, certain aspects of what they saw and experienced? Uh? Yeah. Do you feel like the experience of, say, you know, an abstract form like you've created with, with uh, striped tees is a uniquely individual experience, that everyone's experience is slightly different or entirely different than everyone else's? <laughs> I imagine. Yeah. I imagine. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it is startling sometimes to, or to hear different... Um, I mean, I am interested in creating a landscape or a visual uh, visual textures that are compelling or have a visual associative, you know, associative um, connections for right. people yeah. too, yeah. Um, in an abstract way. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's pleasantly surprising when people do speak to the, uh, you know a personal connection to work yeah. Yeah. Uh, too, and it is exciting to hear about the different visual cues that it, it that it has for different right. people in yeah. the work. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. When you share work with any with your community, you know, right. it's always, it's always this um, 
totally unpredictable experience, right? right. It's it's it hap it occurs with, you know, some people being being yeah, just having new revelations and new experiences, new um, yeah associations with the work, and right. then there's also yeah a vacuum, you know, this weird uh, space as an artist, right? Where right. You, where um, people leave and you, you're left know, alone right. looking at it just yeah. what it, it and it, you only get slivers of perhaps true feedback you know I mean people are uh, sometimes uh, you know just say it's great I loved it or whatever and then you don't you know it's hard to just to, to squeeze out more at times that's I true think. too yeah. yeah one thing I, I bumped into I think my sense of the of the response was tremendously uh, positive um, but I was surprised I, when I talked to one uh, woman after the show who had such a different experience than I did because she found it frustrating, and this is a question that moves us a bit into the choreography, um, that there wasn't more physical contact between dancers, that there wasn't more you know, partnering with that was actually you know, fully physicalized mm -hmm. and more human skin-to-skin -skin contact. Uh, I found the exact opposite for myself, that your partnering would often be a kind of shadowing approach where there was clearly partnering going on and connections between these humans on stage, but not necessarily through bodies throwing themselves, you know, physically, you know, mm -hmm. in e at each other or holding each other in certain and lifting each other or things like that. Mm -hmm. tell, tell us about your, your, your thinking around the way the bodies related to one another on stage. Yeah. Well, I, I feel excited by the tension that exists in the space between bodies, I right, think. Right, right. And so, and there's also something really malleable about it, right? That is yeah. um, how, how, that, how the space is being organized or how bodies are being organized around shape right. or texture. Yeah. So, I, I, and I think that there is so much work that is about touching and right. holding that, that feels heavy handed to me yes, in a right. way. So, um, <coughs> my own impulse i suppose sort of leans i guess away from that there and there is touch you know there is some touch within yeah, it but sure. it's it is i think there, i try to practice restraint right probably right. Be, just because of my own bias yeah yeah sure um, but and then yeah just f some restraint and formal yeah uh, framing with that information you've said that you work in kind of micro components and you'll create small small pieces of choreography and then bring them all together and find the right order and structure. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit more about that? And is that, is, do you work that way out of necessity because that's the best way to use resources and people's time, dancers' time? No. Or do you, you do it because you <laughs> like to work on the micro and then figure out how the macro works out? And yeah, I think it's part um, my, just my own illness of just how I'm obsessed over detail, micro detail. Uh -huh, and so uh -huh. I tend to fixate on and yeah. uh, just be really engaged with that small uh -huh. scale, uh -huh. the small scale kind of micro elements. So yeah, my process, I mean, I, I think in terms of how I organize is looking at fragments and then right. going to a macro organization at a very at a much later stage right right um, but in even terms all the way to getting in the th no you've, you're done before you're in the theater no uh, there's some finishing in the yeah, theater too yeah. I think there's a rough superstructure that exists right pretty early but there is some there is still some um, finagling and right sort of jostling to get to fit things in yeah yeah but uh, yeah, in terms of the economics of it, I don't think it is as, I mean, I think it's it's challenging for dancers. It, it can be uh, difficult to not have this level of organization earlier. Right, um, yeah. I sometimes- Because people get a little stressed about like, what's I the I think if we picture? knew what the larger structure was earlier, it, it might make things uh, right. a smoother sale <laughs> or from earlier on in the game. But I think that, uh, yeah, I. Yeah, I think it's my system, it, and it's um, I, I sometimes fight it too, yeah, right? Yeah. But I think it, uh, yeah, it, it. In working as a choreographer, but also essentially directing the whole undertaking, you're basically kind of self-producing with help from folks and organizations like the Walker and things. But mm -hmm. 
do you find you have to in part be kind of a therapist as well <laughs> as a <laughs> as a choreographer? I Only mean, you're to working myself. With a lot of personalities, and then you've got very strong collaborators who all each have their own vision around maybe their own creative contribution. Then you've got dancers who are wanting to make sure they have those those each movement down just right, and yeah. um, it's coming rushing to an opening and things. And yeah, I mean, it it certainly pushes management skills to a threshold to. Um, to be dealing with and managing logistics along with right. um, the, the feelings, the, the, per, the deep personal connections to the experience of right. creating, um, creating movement, creating yeah. sound. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, in terms of, uh, <laughs> yeah, probably a bad therapist, but, it's, but <laughs> in terms of the, that management and ne that negotiation, it certainly pushes things to, right. um, to a lot of discomfort at right. times. And conflict at times, and too? Or? Yeah, I mean, I feel like this, um, you know, I've worked with these dancers for a very long time, and so you, I, I have... I wanted you, you to talk a little bit about the dancers. You've worked with not all of them for a long time, or, or pretty much... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, some of them longer than others. Yeah, yeah. some of them are, are newer to the game, but um, a number of them have had kind of ongoing relationships sure. in terms of the work. So you know how they, you know, you obviously know how yeah. they move, how they think about their work and things like that. That's true. But, and then to the other point about the... Um, negotiating, uh, negotiating, and working through issues too. You know, you become like a family and work right. through. Um, I, I think you get to know each other's strengths and ways of working, but you also, um, you also, yeah. I mean, probably get aggravated by. Uh, I, I know that uh, people get aggravated by my, uh, you know, uh, yeah, my their their elements of, of the process that right. are challenging and yeah. difficult. Uh, but, but I think that y I think that that uh, that sense of every detail being looked after. I think Penny Free in her review said I, I immediately felt I was in good hands, you know. And there's a there's an intuitive th thing that is read or that the audience reads that oh all the details are being covered. But that, as you said, comes from a sense of being somewhat controlling and very even demanding. Um, is that is that a uh, is that do you do you ha do you get your performers and collaborators to kind of buy in to that sense of detail and the requirement around every every single p bit has to be perfect in a certain way? Uh, um, yeah, I think uh, I think that we I think in seeing the work or in witnessing what yeah. the, how the work exists and lives and needs to live, I think we have. We go in with a mutual understanding that we're striving for right. uh, for clarity and specificity. Right. Yeah. So I think yeah. that that um, I don't. Yeah, there hasn't been much tension yeah. around that too. And I think that um, you know the dancers are collaborators too in creating right. and working sure. through. So there's a in even some of the generation of movement. Yeah, and, things like and that. so right. with the movement generation, and then I think that goes back to the relationship with sure. the dancers too that they. Right also are striving to achieve right. this clarity yeah, yeah. Uh, with uh, the information and how it's being organized into, right. into something that we're all collectively yeah. trying to, to make great. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about the gesture language that you utilize? In this work, there was a lot of hand and arm movement. There was things that felt like they were drawn from maybe sport or play or other, you know, other things that weren't exactly um, mimicking or, mi or miming something, but you just would h give a, a kind of resonance of, of something that looked, felt familiar. Uh, where do you draw your movement ideas from? I think, I think it draws from everywhere. Uh -huh. I mean, I think it, it draws from everyday gesture. It, it draws from private movements through space. It yeah. draws from connections to other people. I think it, um, the awkwardness of living in a body, I think those right. are all um, it's also, I mean, it's symbolic too. I think there, I mean, there are, there are things that are, it's, I think it feels a lot like language to me. It feels uh -huh. like uh -huh. a development of language and of sort of bouncing back of association with meaning right. and abstraction. The, there's a, um, there's a sort of mix of movement styles that I that I've sensed in your work and even more in this piece where you're 
there are elements of ballet and modern and postmodern and um, contact and you know uh, everyday pedestrian movement and folk and it, do you intend is that a, is that just drawing from your life experiences and would you uh, or is that a conscious seeking out of and and creating an amalgam of different kinds of dance styles? Yeah, I think I mean I think it is a negotiation throughout, right? Uh -huh. And but I think it is paying homage to a history uh -huh. that exists in right. the form and a pulling out of relevant dialogue with right. it and yeah. what feels connected to right. to it. Um, so yeah, I think it feels personal. It also feels connected to the history of the performers too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so I think that shapes largely um, what a specific composition Right. Um, embodies. You mean you'll know that this this dancer is really well trained in this particular yeah. style or uh, yeah. type of movement. Yeah. And so, in the in the collaborative efforts of creating and generating, that can certainly shape yeah. how how we're formulating ideas and, right. and building content. Yeah. yeah. I noticed um, also uh, intriguing um, um, reference of sort of physical, uh, gen like gender-based physicality, almost uh, running counter what standard cultural norms are around men move in a certain way or women move in a certain way, and playing with that. And uh, is that kind of conscious around uh, what, does a, what does a body, uh, what does one expect of a certain kind of body, what kind of movements say what um, mm -hmm. on a gender level or whatever? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think that's engaged. I think that I think dance as a form too is, you know, in our culture has, you know, this history of being uh, predominantly, you know, women, right? right. Or a gendered, it's yeah. a gendered form or in many ways or perceived that way. And so I think that um, turning that experience around or investigating it and, and, yeah. and sort of interrogating it yeah. too. Um, and then I just think the experience of embrace embracing and uh, challenging notions about gender and right. body and yeah, absolutely. embodied movement and right. um, uh, so yeah I'm definitely interested in that in a yeah. conversation with that right um, and then I think also the collaborators too that you know the men in this piece too um, their experiences of living in male bodies right uh, yeah. shape how that uh, shape that experience and shape the composition too yeah right. Did you intentionally um, want when the start of the work to have three men and three women uh, as dancers? I, I I was craving that ba that, that some gender balance whatever, yeah. and symmetry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, could you talk about uh, the lighting for the work? Uh, Joe Lavassier has uh, also added an incredible texture to it. Uh, you've worked together before. Right? This is our first oh, time it's your first, collaborating. Okay. Yep. And uh, you've admired his work. I have. Uh, yeah. Members? Yeah. So. I was investigating, uh, sort of, yeah, considering the lighting being a really significant part of the work, right. and sort of working with uh, visual art and the, uh, working with my visual artist collaborator Jen Davis, and thinking about uh, and the musicians also thinking about uh, wanting to be uh, wanting to really consider how right. the light shaped the experience of the space. So uh, you had reached out to Joe, and uh, things lined up. And, uh, and, and when you would, uh, when the lighting design um, was formulated, did you uh, have a lot of back and forth? Uh, yeah, did there, you try things, and you would say yes or no. Or yeah, we had. Uh, I mean, I shared some work samples with Joe early on, yeah. and then would share some rehearsal footage too. He sketched out some sort of architectural elements within the lighting fixtures and sort of how those were organized, and that was the, sort of the beginning of our conversation. Right. And then, uh, yeah. So yeah, there was a, definitely a lot of exchange back right. and forth about. And he made um, up some things that we'd never had before in this in our theater, like yeah. new kinds of new kinds of lighting positions yep. and new kinds of configurations that we yeah. hadn't seen. Uh, uh, um, do, do you mentioned Jen Davis, your visual art collaborator. You've worked a lot with visual artists in, as, a, as, as scenic or contributors to your work. Do you, you tell me about why you prefer to work with someone whose work really is in the visual art world rather than in s theatrical scenic design? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, yeah. Recently, I've I've been interested in that exchange, and right. I think. 
Um, I mean, our form, the choreography dance, feels like a visual form. It is right. um, a time-based visual art form, but uh, it occupies space. I'm interested in that visual landscape. Right. Uh, and then I think that I'm interested in uh, in language, and I'm interested in uh, that exchange of, of language too. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I think it, it kind of started when I was sort of was just looking at a, at some local artists that were sort of exciting and engaging. Sort of do you follow the local visual art scene? And I, I do. People? I yeah. um, a fair amount. Yeah, and uh, yeah. and so uh, I had collaborated with an artist named Terry Payne, right. uh, who does a lot of prints with sort of repetitive themes and language. And then these juxtapositions between kind of formal and more vernacular right. um, ideas too. So sort of um, within these sort of pristine Victorian images, kind of embedding these sort of childish sort of um, yeah sort of dirty words and um, and gestures. And so that I mean it felt like there were a lot of parallels between right. uh, the work that I was interested in and excited about. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and so it, it started there. And then, yeah. and Jen is someone who I've been in conversation with for a long time, and she's an old friend. Uh, and so we went to high school together. Oh, really? Too. Okay. And so, um, and sort of had uh, not been in contact for years, but then had reconnected. And, um, j but just also her use of, um, like I said, visual language, right. information, yep. um, seeing the, the painting or the, um, a collage. Uh, and how it organized scale, different size, um, sizes of images, but also dealing with sort of human experience, this sort of landscape that felt really rich and right. and dense. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, interested in sort of exploring uh, how those thing those two things could be in conversation. I is it uh, exciting or daunting <laughs> when a visual artist, sudden, who's usually working on a two foot by two foot scale yeah. or something, has you know, for, 40 by 65 feet wide w wall to work with the yeah. walker. I mean, uh, it's super daunting. It's yeah. super scary right. and overwhelming and um, and gratifying when something exciting happens that yeah. that yeah. Spiel, feels like it it is in conversation that uh, like a parallel conversation or right, right. Um, direct conversation. So, uh, yeah. yes and yes, yeah. I think. And, and this is the first time you've worked with uh, Jeremy Ilvesacker and, and Mike and JT, the, the band Alpha Consumer. Are, are there, were there um, things about working with live music that you felt were essential to this particular work or um, their music in general that attracted you? Yeah, so, and the, f so the first stage of the collaboration was that Sculpture Garden piece, yes, was working right. with them was the first time I had collaborated. And I, th I think it was just an initial image that sort of sparked the conversation between Jeremy. And I think it goes back to this idea of spectacle. Right. And, um, and I, I, I am a controlling person in, yeah. the, in the work. And right. so it was um, sort of thinking about a juxtaposition of uh, an unleashed sort of wilder quality was right. the initial conversation. Uh. Um, the, your original question is well, what? well, just that um, you know why live music, and yeah. uh, also uh, why Alpha Consumer, uh, yeah. In some ways. I think uh, the w different work Jeremy has done over the years has has dealt with repetition, has yeah. dealt with sort of these parallel themes also that were exciting to right. me, and I think the um, I think that energy, that sort of loose quality of the energy, yep. made sense within the sculpture. Oh, yeah, right. context yep. and then I think just that collaboration also just built a trust in yeah. sort of being able to feel comfortable moving on to another right. project but yep. it is super scary too um, yeah because, because it's such a, str a strong component and yeah and, but you chose to uh, you you use them and the nature of their music is more atmospheric and textual than it is rhythmic necessarily and did that grant you a certain amount of freedom to have the music and movement kind of coexist rather than be, um, you know, sort of attached to the hip to one another. Um, yeah, I, I think, I mean, there was a lot of conversation about and a lot of iterations of yeah. the sound right. uh, and sort of getting at what the essence of the movement and the sound were and right. how they lived in harmony or sort of friction with each other. Sure, yeah. So uh, it's, I think that was a, a conversation throughout right. uh, trying to organize. and. 
um, and where it was more rhythmic and where it was more right. um, sweeping and atmospheric in a way that was sort of gentler with yeah. how the, the piece functioned. And music can be so emotional too. I mean, did you did you play with uh, work with Jeremy around what kind of emo emotional resonance in each in, in different kinds of sections you were looking for, and how the music could help play toward that? Yeah, I think uh, their sensibility, Jeremy's sensibilities, and mine line up in a lot of ways. Uh -huh. I think it goes back to to uh, ideas about. I mean, it's the touching. It's like there are. Uh, I guess there, you know, there's a spectrum, right? That that happens, right? right? There's stuff that feels heavy-handed. There's stuff that feels um, gentle and balanced, and right. and so I think it was, um, it was an that was an exciting conversation uh, about right. um, sort of managing that and how and how they the two could live together. Sure, and not milking the cliche of emotion that music can sometimes fall into. Yeah, yeah. I think being careful, but at the same time, I mean, I th I I get swept up and wrapped yeah. up in the um, yeah, in the majesty of these um, environments and spaces that are created by the sound too, right, and right. Um, so I'm excited by that too. We always struggle at the in the McGuire when we have live music about um, where to place it because uh, theatrical or dance artists often want to use the full expanse of the stage, and there's not a pit or anything mm -hmm. like that. You used to, you f you found intriguing placements for the band and things. Um, when did you land on them starting on the box above our head, behind our heads, and finishing almost out in the loading dock, like by that door in the far, far corner and things like that? Yeah, I think the um, the starting on the, the balcony was pretty early on. Uh -huh. I, th I, right. I wanted to connect to the um, that relationship that the dance had in the garden where the music s starts and the dancers um, uh, start processing and then there's a yeah. meeting and a right. connection. So I was interested in having that happen again. Yeah. Uh, and then the in, the back of the space, I, and then from there it was a wrestling match of figuring out what what made sense for the music and the reveal uh -huh. of the right. of the musicians right. within the space. And and I think we danced around where where they would live on the stage. Right. And until we sort of fixed on the, the loading dock uh, being this sort of uh, chamber of, of sound yes, um, right. that exists too. Yeah. And I think it was about balance and information and yeah. wanting to make them a focal point, but also to, um, for the composition to really be focused on the dance and the visual elements too, but right. um, trying to put them in concert in a way that where they all felt um, important. But Yeah, yeah. Um, uh but focused. Yeah. Um, stepping back a little bit about the art form of dance and uh, people in the museum field and um, in art centers are thinking a lot these days about the permanence versus impermanence of dance. And it's obviously uh, an ephemeral art form. Um, do you see that impermanence of dance as a blessing or a curse? <laughs> <laughs> certainly both, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> the pain of something evaporating after investing years of your life into right. you know into creating I mean why it's so cost ineffective right yes, to right. invest your life but there's something so spectacular about being able to share an experience with a group of people um, to create something a moment that will only last in that time uh, right um, right there's I mean it's simultaneously special and horrifying at the right. at the same time yeah. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a constant negotiation. I think it's an attraction repulsion that I right. that I have with the form. How do you feel about um, new ways of thinking that institutions, particularly collecting institutions like museums, are trying to now apply toward the art form of dance and figuring out how to preserve it in some way? Um, yeah, I think it's exciting and super problematic. I right. think that I mean I think it's ex I'm excited by a lot of the conversation that's happening, and by the work that you're doing, by the um, the work that's happening in the gallery that Ralph and um, Lemon did yeah. recently. I was yeah. I found that work really compelling and those ideas compelling. I think uh, looking forward yeah to the next to Sarah Mitchelson's next piece yeah. in the, in the gallery. Uh, 
gallery? Right? It, well, uh, that's, <laughs> a, that's, a, that's a TVA. <laughs> is, that a, is that a sensor? <laughs> is that a cut? Sorry. No, no, um, no, no, it's fine. We, we actually are. We're still exploring a number of spaces. Okay. So, uh, um, so, but in, in, yeah, the issue of permanence, um, yeah, it's a, those economic questions, they pose some major challenges, but I think it's important to ask these questions as artists who make, th who are um, investing our lives and dedicating our right. lives to this um, form that does evaporate and disappear in many ways and um, doesn't have permanence, but how it can have a residue and a, right, a lasting, right. I mean, I think it does, it has a legacy, it has a, an influence, a cultural um, weight to it that I think is, I mean, it's hugely influential and important to me, yeah, yeah. right, in shaping my life. But, um, yeah, it raises a lot of interesting questions. Well, and we're spending a lot of time, as you know right now, around the legacy of Merce Cunningham and uh, your, your involvement in combining visual, sonic, and movement art. Do you see him as an important influence and a, and a, a key figure? Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it, you know, we'll be doing an exhibition in a year and a half of attempting to embrace a certain amount of liveness. Um, but the company's gone, and you yeah, know, uh, does, is that notion of liveness um, absolutely essential to your work as a choreographer, or could you imagine your work living in some other way, whether it's through documentation or through a 3D applications or through film, dance on film, or other, other kind of platforms. Uh, is that yeah. something you're interested in investigating? I mean, I, real, I am interested in the live, uh, the live performance, the live elements, and that tension that exists with right. having a real dancer negotiating right. these problems in space in real time. Right. So those things are what are most compelling to me about right. the form. Yep. And yeah, I mean, I think the those they just live differently in those other ways so right. you know right. i do i certainly rely on those means of documentation yes right um but it exists in a, a very different way that right. i acknowledge is different yeah and yeah yeah, yeah. you're part of a, a community that's grown a great deal here in the twin cities the dance community and i wondered if you could reflect on how you see uh, the you know twin cities dance today versus 20 years ago when maybe you were starting your work and things like that? Yeah, uh, yes and no. I mean, uh -huh. I, it, I mean, if it feels changing and evolving, but it feels like the sa a lot of the same huh. people. It, right, um, yeah. That's a difficult question. I mean, it's, it's shaped, I mean, I think the, the dialogue, the commitment of so many artists in this community uh, it does shape and inform my thinking, my action, right. in, um, in how I think about work, how I'm um, negotiating my own decisions and, and the conversations I want to engage in. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's super important to me yeah. as an artist yeah. is um, staying connected to that and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and finding meaning in, in what those artists are doing. So. Some people um, will, in, say in New York, will refer to that they wish they had more time or more economic capacity to be in more dialogue with their colleagues in the city, but everyone's rushing off to just get their work done. And, yeah. And um, do you find that that's a unique benefit to this community, is that people do take the time to see each other's work and be in dialogue and things like that? I, I mean, I think it's cultivated. I think uh -huh. it's. I think it's... Uh, something that that people have really thought through to create platforms for people to organize, yes, for people right. to, to get together. Right. So people like Lori Van Weeren and, and yeah, right. uh, organizing, and I mean, and the Walker as a space too. Yeah. Um, and uh, or people like Kenna Cotman that are yes. organizing right. communities in really s super exciting ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I I think the landscape, the the context does it does make it a really does make in some ways make it makes it more hospitable, but it, it has its own challenges too. Right. You hear the same um, complaints and challenges from artists too, and I'm I'm negotiating those challenges right. uh, too. But um, do you feel like we as a community are um, uh, critical? Have enough a high enough critical standard about 
one another's work. Um, in smaller cities or mid-sized cities, sometimes there's a tendency to be, because everyone knows each other, you know, to be very generous around response and feedback around work. And things. So. I, I think, uh, are we, say the, say are we phrase it? tough enough on tough ourselves? Tough enough on ourselves? I think we're plenty tough enough on yeah, ourselves. Right. I mean, I think when we're cultivating, and I mean, I'm horrified by my, my early work. I'm horrified by, you know, the mistakes I've made, but they've been, you know, I needed, I needed nurturing. I needed, yeah, um, right. I needed encouragement in, in sort of growing as an right. artist too. Yeah. So I don't think we need to be any more ruthless. Right. I right. think the context is yeah. difficult enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not, not to say I'm not ruthless. I am. I mean, I think right. I have high expectations for work and I want it. Um, and I complain, but, um, in terms of what I'm, uh, yeah, in terms of directing that energy towards artists, I don't think that's constructive. That's I very think that, uh, well stated, uh, I think. Um, do, do, do you find your work as a dancer continuing to inform your work as a choreographer? Are you interested in continuing to perform with other people? Or? Yeah, I mean, I feel like the two are really connected. I want to connect to the, another idea, yeah, though, about yeah. that, other, that last thought. Um, about you know criticism or thinking about criticism and how yeah. it how it how it lives, how it lives right. right and writing and, and communication and, and um, communities um, you know there are some efforts sort of for cultivating more writing so that's right. something that I think this community needs desperately is right. more writing yes. about dance and it's right. something that that we could use um, that would be nice to have. But how we attack that, or how we how we Maybe cultivate, isn't the right word. yeah, <laughs> yes, how we right. how we consider, uh, I guess, attack develop. the issue, yes, right. and develop the issue, yeah, yeah. or develop um, means of providing criticism and f providing meaningful dialogue. I think is a an, a whole other discussion. Yes, too. Anyway, it's w no, but it's worth. Even uh, maybe off camera, us talking further about that because it's something that we are concerned about. Yeah. And uh, I just saw a quote from Claudia LaRocca. She sent me this note and she's thinking about writing about the ways in which language and live art trouble and at the same time enliven one another. Mm -hmm. um, I think dance perhaps as a form it has unique um, challenges around mm -hmm. words being um, the best vehicle by which to um, yeah, describe or absolutely. critique or whatever else. I struggle with that, I mean, hugely. Right. I, I think there are people like Emily Gastineau and Teresa Mattis who are, you know, kind of cultivating and fostering this yeah. artistic exchange. And I know Billy and Emily, yep. Billy Mullaney yep. and Emily wrote a lot during Out There. I yeah. mean, they, they really made these, created these robust Definitely. Um, essays about right. the work in Out There. And yeah. that uh, uh, was, is hugely valuable yes. and important. Yeah, too. no, I, I completely agree. Do you need a sidetrack? No, no, no I, the last question really that I have is, um, are you hopeful for uh, dance going forward? Um, and uh, are you excited about your next steps as a, as a creator? Yeah. yeah, yes I am. I yeah. mean, I think... Because uh, there's a uh, lot of challenges and there's funding issues and there's yeah. space issues and there's, you know, economic constraints uh, that uh, feel in some ways as tough as they've ever been. I Absolutely. Think. I mean, it, there, there are these dichotomies always living right. together, right? This yeah. joy and excitement um, with the simultaneously, simultaneous horror and heartbreak that is, right. just feels co like a constant that, right. it, uh, that happens. Right. So the rejection mixed with, you know, the joy of what, what but that's, you know, that's a constant and that's, um, yeah, we do this. Yeah, we yeah. love this, and we, are you, we keep doing this. Uh, are you already on to your thinking about your next works? I'm really yeah. focused on the the next uh, sort of iterations of this this work, but uh, I I right. do think about those just out of sheer necessity and logistics sure. in terms right. of organizing. But right. um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, really Great. focused on well, helping this live. I look forward to hearing and hopefully seeing the work on tour, hearing how it all goes, and also you know really following your, your work going forward. So thanks so much for the fabulous work. Thank you, Philip. Yeah, it's a pleasure. You.